immeasurably more. That's uh, God's way with us. The story is told of uh, Abraham Lincoln being out with a couple of his sons one day when they were much younger, and they began a scuffle. And the scuffle uh, led to crying, which prompted a neighbor to ask, what's the matter? Lincoln responded by saying that the boys were, were simply doing what the rest of the world does. They have three walnuts, and each boy wants two. It seems that there is never enough, or at least we have convinced ourselves of that. That's not the case when it uh, comes to walnuts around the Grieve household. We have a, a walnut tree in our front yard, and those walnuts have absolutely dropped like crazy. We've even uh, lost a few branches because they were so weighed down with walnuts. I picked up what seems like hundreds of them. My young next-door neighbor, who takes an interest in anything that has to do with plants or trees, tells me that every few years, a, a tree will have what is called a masting year. A masting year is when a tree produces an overabundance of fruit. If that's the case, we have had a masting year on steroids. <laughs> if, you, if you think about it, God's abundance is all around us. It was great singing those uh, classic uh, Thanksgiving hymns. They, they help uh, direct our minds and hearts to that fact that, that God's abundance is all around us. His own son made the, the claim that he came so that we might have life and, and have life abundantly. There is nothing like Thanksgiving to give us pause to count our blessings. In giving thanks, we become keenly aware that God is all about taking care of our needs. I hope we, uh, we have that realization yet again that God is, is all about taking care of our needs. We realize that we are truly blessed people and have every reason to thank God for that. Jesus offers a, a wonderful word about the blessings God heaps upon our lives. Interestingly, he, he talks about such things in the context of judging others. Jesus says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Jesus is clear about such things. Rather than, than judging, all of us would do well to offer grace, which always leads to to forgiveness. Grace also leads to, to generosity, a generosity of spirit, a generosity in offering one's life, a generosity in, in, even in, in offering that which God has, has bestowed upon our lives. As we experience the, the gift of God's love, we find ourselves at that, that enviable place, that, that really good place to give of ourselves. Generosity overflows from hearts that have been so touched. So Jesus offers this. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The image here has to, to do with with an outer garment that was popular and, and used uh, daily during the, the time of Jesus. There was generally a, a, a fold just above the belt that would have, would have been more than ad adequate to hold a, a certain amount of grain. It would just be there and you could hold that, that amount of grain. Jesus talks about an amount of grain so great that the fold couldn't contain it. What Jesus is talking about here is the, the love God so richly bestows upon our lives. That love has a way of, of affecting us even when we are tempted to unfairly judge, if not condemn another person. It also has a way of affecting our giving, the giving of our lives, even uh, the giving of our resource. Give and it will be given to you, says Jesus. 
The more we give, the blessings of God become more apparent. And those blessings don't just fill us, but they fill us to the overflowing. James states it well in James chapter 1, verse 17, when he says, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Our cups runneth over, if you will, when it comes to God's love. Are you feeling that? Are you experiencing that? Are you, are you knowing that to be true for your life, that your cup does indeed run over with the love of God working in you and through you? Regrettably, though, far too many are hesitant when it comes to receiving that love. It's one of the great regrets of life. God's love offered, but yet God's love not received. Many of those people are weighed down with guilt, convincing them that they really don't deserve God's love. They're right about that, you know. They don't deserve God's love, but they miss the point. God's love is is not earned. It is simply given whether one is deserving or not. Hence the age-old truth, we give because God first has given. Others take an opposite tack. They, they feel that they do deserve God's love. After all, they are so very righteous. They too miss the point. You know, the, it's true that if, if we're into this, hey, look at me and how righteous I am, well, that just gets us nowhere. Again, none of us deserves the overwhelming love of God. No one deserves anything from God. Yet he gives and gives and gives again. Hence the age-old truth. We give because God has first given. God's love is given as a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. As we have said all through this series, God's love is immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Thanks be to God. It is left to us to experience that love. And in experiencing that love, find ourselves transformed. Literally made over on account of God's overwhelming love in our lives. That's why on a day when we find ourselves focusing on giving, we draw inspiration from the fact that God gives and gives again. His love is always present, always leaning into our lives, always making its way uh, into our lives with profound effect. In a word, when it comes to to God, God's great gifts in our lives, we can never outgive God. Paul writes in in Romans eight thirty two. Absolutely proving the point, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? The great gift of Jesus Christ. You hear me talk about that great gift, hear, hear that in the context of the prayers that, that, that I pray. God, thank you for the great gift that is Jesus in each of our lives. Jesus talked a lot about money and possessions. He knew that what we think about money and possessions shapes what we think about stewardship and affects our giving. You know, 16 out of 38 parables that that Jesus taught concerns handling of money and possessions. He thought that much Uh, about that important subject that he he often taught on it. In the Gospels, one in 10 verses, 288 in all, deal directly with the subject of money. You and I talk about money all the time, and if we're not talking about it, then we're certainly thinking about it. Money is simply a a part of life, and because of that, money has effect upon our lives one way or the other. We're living proof of that. We know that to be true. The great reformer Martin Luther once said about money, 
What people of faith do with their money is indicative of what they believe about God. Think about that. What you do with your money is indicative of what you believe about God. As a people of faith, we believe that when it comes to stuff, it's all God's anyway. We're simply stewards of it. That's fundamental to who we are as people of faith. We recognize that everything that is, is on account of God. We are essentially stewards of that, and that was cast at the very beginning of creation. We came into this world with nothing, and I don't want to surprise you, you're going to leave with nothing. (laughs) It's what we do with what we have that makes the difference. John Wesley used to say, make all you can, save all you can, give away all you can. During his life and and ministry, John Wesley made, made a fortune, mostly from the sale of his books. In fact, it is said of Wesley that he made over 30,000 pounds during his lifetime, a ver- veritable fortune for that, that time in which he lived. Yet upon his death, Wesley had just a, a few coins in his pocket. He had given his fortune away. Wesley practiced what he preached. During his life, he said, when I die, if I leave behind 10 pounds, you and all mankind may bear witness against me that I have lived as a thief and a robber. He went on to say, I I will leave my books behind, but whenever God calls me hence, in every other respect, my own hand will be my executor. I've been tempted during uh, stewardship time to have the congregation sing that, that grand old hymn, I Surrender All. You know, the first verse goes like this, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him, all to him I freely give. I figure that singing that song might uh, be taken the wrong way. But on second thought, I surrender all might be the very thing we need to sing. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. For the person of faith, giving is always a matter of trust and faith. When we give, we say a lot about what we think of God and his desire to meet our every need. When we release what we have in our grasp, we, in effect, are taking a, a stance of faith that, yeah, he's gonna, he is still going to take care of our need. When we give, we say a lot about what we think about God's love and, and how that love sustains us. You know, when we release, we essentially stand with faith and trust that God's love will still be issued and issued in profound ways. When we give, we say a lot about our awareness of God's many blessings and how those blessings impact our lives. And as we've already said, during this season of the year, we do consider those blessings. Our lives are indeed affected, and we find ourselves drawn closer to God. And interesting, interestingly, we find ourselves drawn closer to, to one another. When we give, we also uh, say a lot about ourselves and the priorities that we hold dear. When we give, we say a lot about what we really value. When we give, we also say a lot about the draw of the world and the influence that it has upon us. And let's be brutally honest with ourselves. The the world has a draw upon us. Just wait uh, till uh, Black Friday and all the advertisements uh, come out and we'll be looking at those page after page after page. In the end, when we give, we say a lot about our trust or lack thereof. The trust that we place in God to look out for us. People give for all sorts of reasons. Some do so out of uh, a sense of guilt. 
Some do so out of a sense of duty. Still others give out of a sense of of gratitude. And hopefully, um, as we live into the season of Thanksgiving, that we uh, we find ourselves uh, full of gratitude for the great things that God has done. This this latter uh, issue, this this stuff of uh, giving out of a out of a sense of gratitude, always puts us at a good place. Grat- gratitude puts us to to considering the the very blessings of God in our lives. It all also puts us to trusting that those blessings will continue. In a word, we make a statement of faith that that God's good work will continue and will come as as good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Sometimes it takes tremendous faith and trust to assert that, and then at other times, we we just live in that, and we know it to be true, Last week, you received uh, uh, a mailing from Randy Shear, the chairman of our, uh, our finance committee. In, included in that uh, mailing was an, an attempt to, um, to, to, to bring forward a, a narrative budget. And I hope that you, uh, you read through it. It was on a, on a sheet uh, much like this. Uh, you, you noticed that there was a a long list, a, a, a very brief summary, if you will, of the number of things that are going on in regard to the life and ministry of this church. And then there was an attempt to place a percentage of our ministry budget that goes to support uh, uh, each of those, uh, those major uh, points of, of our work together. It was very gratifying uh, pulling together uh, this narrative budget. And again, if you haven't read it, I, I encourage you to, uh, to do that. We do indeed have an exciting story to tell. And as you know, there is so much more that, that goes on than what is contained on this, uh, this 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Just in the last week, I uh, heard someone say that the fellowship of this church is like a warm blanket. I heard about a child who attends Awana admitting that he was actually getting into the Bible study when that wasn't so much the case when Awana first started. I'm delighted to hear from the group that uh, painted the, the kitchen at Grace Kids and how, uh, how gratified they were to help out. And certainly we could uh, repeat that sort of gratification, that sort of uh, Uh, esteemed honor to help out in in so many other ways around this community, near and and far. Last Thursday, I uh, stood right there, and I looked out on parents that had gathered uh, for their child's uh, Thanksgiving program, and I can sense, literally sense, that they were thankful for the good care and instruction their children were receiving. You know, just recently, I I heard from another person who had just lost a loved one, and she couldn't stop talking about how much the church had come around her. That's just a brief list of things that that happen literally on a daily basis in and through the ministry of this church. We have an exciting story to tell. God is working in our midst, and we can be thankful for the ministry of St. John. Above all things, we can be thankful for the presence, the power, and the leadership of our Lord as he seeks to lead us into a new ministry year. Last week, you you also received uh, from Randy a a, a pledge card. Uh, You may have uh, brought that same pledge card with you today. You'll notice that there are uh, some pledge cards uh, on the ends of the pews. Our ushers uh, will be glad to, to issue one of those cards to you. If you, if you need one, uh, just lift a hand and that'll happen. I want you to know that uh, Cheryl and I plan to make a pledge. We always do that. And by God's grace, uh, we, uh, 
we're always able to, to follow through. You see, we're not asking you to do anything that we're not willing to do. Now, we've prayed, we've discerned, and, and are prepared to take a step of faith. And this year in particular represents that sort of uh, step of faith for us. We, we trust God for the year ahead. And we know with faith and trust that God will prove himself true. We know that to be the case because he has done that over and over and over and over again over the period of time that we have been married. I hope that you've spent time praying, <clears throat> that you've spent time discerning. I hope that you do that uh, uh, in, in this moment uh, as we are worshiping our Lord. I, I also hope that you find yourself ready to take that step of faith by making a pledge in support of next year's ministry budget. So let's, uh, let's take time to do that uh, right now. And as we do that, let's keep this verse in mind. We, we rehearsed it a big, in a big way last, last year. It, it's certainly a, a, a apropos for, for what we do here uh, today. From 2 Corinthians 9-7, we read, You should give what you have decided to give in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hey, friends, it's masting time. Do you believe that? It's masting time. God's immeasurably more is all around us. Believe that for your life, for the life of this church. And as you do, may you find yourself responding accordingly. So Kyle will come uh, here in, in just a, a, a moment and will lead us um, in a song, a meditative uh, song that will help us in this stuff of praying and meditating. Uh, we we want to ask you to, to take time to, to fill out a, a, a pledge card uh, to uh, bring it forward, if you will, to, to spend time uh, kneeling at God's altar. Certainly, you can pray right, right where you are. You'll find uh, two baskets here to the front. Uh, if you will, um, you uh, lay your card there and know that God uh, stands to strengthen you, to provide, to overwhelm you with his blessings, to make you clearly aware of his deep and abiding love. So you spend this time, let the Lord lead you, uh, find yourself ready to respond, and in that uh, readiness of response, uh, bring your card forward and uh, dedicate uh, your intentions to the Lord. And so as you notice, it's not just Kyle, but some of his best friends in the whole world will lead us in this time of worship. May God be with us all.